All right, happy Sunday, everyone. Um, so this is your game versus Phoenix Rising Amethyst that occurred. Um, I said that it occurred last Thursday. Um, looking at draft. The battle uh, looks like you guys had a pause right at the beginning. Seconds. DC from Luigi, glad he's back. Um, so first things first, we'll just quickly talk about the map. So Towers of Doom. Um, obviously, as you um, go through, this map is a typical 4-1 double soak rotation heavy map um, where, you know, your offlaner typically will soak mid, then top, then back to mid, and just consistently try and keep the waves cleared so that way the four-man squad can focus on defending and taking this camp, controlling vision and rotations, taking this camp and invading potentially, and of course, trying to siege down this building. And once you control the bottom bell tower on Towers of Doom, um, the game is very heavily in your favor. Um, the main reason is that if you're consistently double soaking, you are able to control rotations to the bottom. And if you can have bottom, you can get these sapper camps. Sapper camps escorted in um, potentially can be additional shots to the core. So definitely getting an early advantage on bottom can be a huge help. Um, in general, macro-wise, it's not that you can't, but in general, boss is almost never worth it just because you are going to want to hold on to bottom lane. Um, it's almost always better to take structures than boss unless, um, unless like you said, boss is a game-winning type thing. So, and then this top camp also isn't super significant. Like, sure, knocking down this lane, knocking down any tower is good because it's more shots. But I said the first priority is always bottom lane, and then you can kind of, you know, make adjustments from there. So, looking at draft, um, if I had to pick a winner at draft, um, I actually really like your guys' draft. You've got um, two really strong point and click, well, one point and click CC, two really strong CCs. Um, if you, you know, catch Kane, Vala out, they just flat out die. Um, you've got great poke damage for Vala, Mephisto. Um, Kane, as best as he can, has to drop potions. Um, potentially, I'd say game plan would be either um, Cocoon, Mephisto, when he blinks in, because it's really funny when you do that. Um, he can't teleport back. He just stays at wherever you cocooned him. So if he, like, dives in real deep, you can cocoon him and then kill the players that are trying to save him or um, just kill him as soon as he comes out. So um, all good stuff. So um, or play more front to back and um, cocoon Joe and take the team fight and kill them while they're weak. Uh, 5v5 team fights might be slightly in their favor, but I really like your guys' comp again because... Trench can dive in deep on that Mephisto and the Vala and not be too scared. Vala's pretty squish. Um, yeah, I think I'd give it to you guys. I think you're ahead. The one strength that they have is that um, they uh, have some maybe a little bit better zone control. That's about it with the Diva. So, yep, I would start there. So, here we go. Um, Five. Alright, we're going to do the character view. We'll follow around Melkor here for a little bit at the beginning. So, we want the early game fight. We've got more stuns. we got more CC. Uh, a little bit late on the follow-up if you're thinking of engaging on that, but that's okay. So, good heal. Yeah, we got time, bud. So, alright. So, we'll go ahead and we'll start our rotation. Um, no reason to run this far. You guys cleared first, you should have vision. Like, maybe because you both tapped, you ran that way. But you don't have to be afraid of their rotation. You guys were ahead. So, Joe's just kind of watching. Um, this is a little bit aggressive. You're not going to get a kill with that dig. Just focus on the wave clearing stuff. I'm only looking to have the free globe, but you're half health. So... Keeping things cleared, keeping things cleared. Uh, missed an XP globe there, nothing too crazy. Okay, right here. If he does this, someone needs to be screaming 
Mephisto, Blunk in, Mephisto, Blunk in. Like, this is a kill. Like, I know we're probably already running to camp, but, like, any time that he uh, does that, it's really dangerous. So, if you can, be watching for Mephistos to blink in vision, because you know where they're going to return. See, Whiskey had the shot on him, but, like, if you were to dig and everyone fire their stuff at him, like, that's just dangerous. Don't, like I said, punish those Mephistos when they do that. Good bush check. We see Joe's here. Stay healthy. Yep. Go ahead and pop your beetle. Looking good. They got the camp slightly ahead, but that's fine. Uh, let's clear this wave. We'll double check XP's at four. Yeah, so their whole comp is like clump in Mephisto damage on the clump and then throw in sustain stuff. So. You guys are just getting wailed on by this Mephisto. We're like just too far clumped. Okay, let's take a look real quick. So four is a piece. XP wise, how are we doing? Let's look at some talents real quick. No, no talent you from Brightwing, that's okay. Alright. Um yeah, it's just the few minions that we missed early game. Everything else is even. So like the few minions that you guys didn't get here. Let's put you a little bit behind. Nothing too crazy. Um, looking at just XP soaked, like your L's ahead. Your L's gonna out double soak Diva. So um yeah, just be careful here. We're taking a lot of unnecessary poke into their composition. Our wave clear is in our chromie. Chromie can safely wave clear. Um yeah, just do your best to safely do things and look to punish Mephisto afterwards or wait till um you know, Joe's used her shield and try and engage on her or engage on Vala from a flank or something. But we'll see. Um, yeah, he walked through that bush like three times, so I would definitely make sure that we're checking it. Um, Whiskey can be dropping time traps. Um, I don't see any time traps out right now. So make sure, similar to Junkrat, you want to put your time traps everywhere. You either want them in areas where you think they're going to rotate, so like in bushes like this, in chokes like this, or defensively, where you can put them for yourself to dodge skill shots and the stuff, so that way you can save yourself or friends. But if you're worried that they're coming from the south, uh, put it there. So here they come from the south again. Like this time trap in the lane here is not effective. Like unless you're gonna like if you were to use it on the Vala when she's walking there, sure, but. Okay, um, I guess Whiskey maybe missed the minimap because this is not the right one. This is it's up here, so we're split. Because I bet the call was get the bottom one, and then if we didn't look at the minimap, the bottom one is this one. But the bottom one we actually need to fight for is up here. So like all the time traps and all the chromie setup that he's doing, unfortunately, needs to be up here. So this is going to be potentially a worrisome team fight. You see, you see the same idea. You know, Deckard's got all their potions down. Wendy's stuck clearing the lane. Yeah, we're... This is dangerous. No, Corey, you need to leave. Hopefully Luigi doesn't die for it. Nope. Okay, we got one poke. Doing your best to live. Okay, trench one. We're still poking here. And Melkor's probably dead. Oh! Oh my gosh, you live with like five health. That is nuts. You should have died for that. Almost poked him. Yeah, I think that one comes down to just not being set up. Like, we, we used a lot of time down here. Like, if instead of being down here, we wave clear this and then have all the vision down this way, Chromie could have been sent up here and poking or poking from over here. Instead, we just got chunked real hard. Like, both teams did damage. Like, we look at our overall hero damage. Like, um, you know, it's like... Like, we're getting out-sieged a ton, damage-wise, by Vala and Mephisto. Like, it's hurting. So. But, yeah, minion and siege-wise, Slay so Trenches ahead. So, just uh, be aware of where we're going or what the next fight is. Um, wait a minute, did you go auto-attack build? Okay, this is... As much as I like auto-attack builds, you can't go auto-attack build into blinds. And then on top of that... 
Um, these are very, like, back-ranged assassins. You're not really going to want to auto-attack trade into them. Um, this probably should have been a Q-build game, just because it's it's a little bit safer to do, and you can get secure damage on stuff. I could be wrong, but I just... If there's a blind on Joe, and it's like, it's like, and she, it's like, Mike, I wouldn't take the auto attack to risk losing my uh, bonus attack. So that's just me, maybe though. So um, everything else looks fine. Magic spit, get more Q pokes. Oh no, increase the basic. Yeah, more Q pokes attack range. Try and be safer on attacking. Um, yeah, everything else looks okay. Uh, magic armor, yep. Yeah. Because they went stacking magic on both of them. Oh, he went Q-Build Mephisto. Interesting. Okay. Uh, but, like I said, early objective's not too crazy. I think you guys turn on when you hit 10. Because you can cocoon the Joe and just go in. Um, lucky for you guys didn't die. This is one of those things where there's like nothing to do on the map. So you want to make sure that you guys have vision. So that way you're not getting ganked. Your L's ahead on rotations. She's going to clear top quickly and then be able to come back down. Um, Diva's kind of a pain. Like, yes, you can gank her. But you're really never going to kill her with a bomb. So, yeah, maybe a well-timed polymorph CC train, you can kill the mech. But, um, this wall is half health. Let's see if you guys can do anything about it. Looks like we're just... Yep, this is a better trap. Good job. So, Urel needs to hurry up and get down to mid. She's got it covered. Um, maybe a little far forward here. We'll see what happens. That's good damage. That's good damage. Yes, 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 yes. That's exactly what you're looking for, is to punish them when they push up like that. You've got more CC. Camps are up. Are we doing camps? Okay, you check this bush. Um, yep, and he counter it back. So, good job controlling vision. That's what you want to do. And they're potentially going to look to invade. Nope, no, nah, not doing. Feel free, Melkor. Um, if you continue to play Newbrack, I know you said maybe Newbrack wasn't your favorite. Um, remember, every time you cast an ability, you spawn a beetle, and the beetles give vision. So if you're standing in this bush and you don't know where they are and the wave is not showing, um, you can just push W here in the bush. The beetle will walk to the closest wave, which means he'll walk this way, and then he'll give you vision of what's over here. So that way you don't have to be running back and forth inside the bush. You just either drop off the beetle while you're in the bush so it climbs out and comes down here, or you drop off the beetle up here and it will come out this way and potentially scout something. It won't go up, it won't go up here, but it'll you know come down this way. So, camp for camp. That's a good call. So we don't have vision control over that anymore. We just saw both of them up here. Clearing waves, clearing waves. Decker just did... Decker did minus healing. Everyone got hit by minus healing. Um, if we don't know that they're here, we maybe don't want to step up so far to try and catch that wave. Um, obviously, feel free to dig out earlier. Like, as soon as you see the triangles cast, just leave. You're not peeling for anyone there. Okay. So... Eight eights, no vision, one shrine, and um, and trenches off timed wave. So you guys need to be careful here. So like trenches catching this soak here, which is fine. Like it's what his job is. But since it's tar starting in five seconds, um, if you guys are anticipating a full five on five, which I haven't been watching where uh, Diva is. If you're expecting a full 5v5, Trench needs to be screaming, I'm, I'm not going to be there, I'm not going to be there, stall. Or if it's a 5-on-5, five five, you know, don't take this fight. Because, like, right now, you potentially are going to walk into this bush where I think Joe was last seen. And, like, unless you can kill Joe right off this initial engage, it's going to be up to Whiskey to somehow poke this objective. And the best position for poking this objective is going to be either from mid here or from this safe area here. Um, down here isn't bad. This is a good poke, but it's also dangerous because you're walking into a choke. So, let's see what happens. So we get the bush. We see somebody was over here. There's Space Ghost. Or Space Poke. And there's the rest of their team. We see four. Yeah, and here's Sparhawk. So yeah, but like I said, I'm like, we, yeah, we needed to not take this engage. Melkor just dies. There's nothing you can do. That's a good poke from Whiskey. Whiskey don't die from another poke, though. Uh, wasted loop. I I don't think you wanted to do that. Oh, wait a minute. You went loop? Um, 
If you loop every time Mephisto blinks away, I like it. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's fine. As long as you loop every time Mephisto. So if that's what your guys' game plan was, it's actually genius. So if you, every time Mephisto blinks in, Chromie drops loop, and you just kill Mephisto. There's, like, almost nothing they can do. Like, sure, to ho like, um, it said, uh, Deckard's gonna try and throw all of his abilities on the loop target, but, like, I'm pretty sure he just blows up between Cassia Burst and Chromie Burst. The Mephisto just dies. So, I like that a lot, if that's what you were trying to do. So, um, but yeah, that one here, I'd have to rewatch the offline, and maybe if I have enough time, I can watch it. But, like, like, Sparhawk got there, so it was a 5v4, you guys had to leave, and you ended up losing one, too. Um, like, technically, Urel is ahead. Like, if you look where the waves are right now, Urel's ahead in waves. But, like, you know, at what cost? So, like, now that... So, this is something where, when, since you are ahead here, Urel, potentially, once you're done clearing this, you can come down here and look for a kill. Like, try and make something happen before tens, since you guys are behind, and potentially they might be pushing up. Um, and, you know, a new Brack will be back in time. But, so, we'll see. What we do. Yeah, see, look, they keep pushing down here, because a noob's dead. You should be rotating down. See, no, this is not good. So, like, yeah, we gotta force something to happen. Because right now we're losing. And so, like, going up and soaking this wave, like, yes, we'll get you closer to 10s, but, like, they're overextended. And if they start sieging, you've got a great, like, flank here. So, I don't know what people are calling or what's happening, but potentially, like, make that half rotation down here. Just so that way you can at least try and make something happen. Because, like... Yeah, they're still sieging the wall here. It's a little deep on the dig. But we're okay. Okay, so you found D.Va doing the camp, which... Yes, I believe you win that trade. Um, Yeah, I don't know. That camp's not that valuable to me. I would have loved to have seen you come down here and get that kill. Or force a kill. But, whatever. You also win that camp. So, we got 10s. Same time, slash first. So, Bretwing went up to the URL. I don't know if that was necessary. I don't know how much health Trench had. But, we just left our team down here. I guess it secures the point. That's fine. So, now that Bretwing's not here, we walk away. Yep, we walk away. Oh, see, that's unfortunate. So if Bradwing was still here, if we time-looped Mephisto right there, like he overextended real far, we could have potentially gotten a kill on him with all of our stuff. But that's okay. Uh, we're moving, we're moving. We don't have vision of this bush again. Ball is mid. Looking for, we should look for a fight. They got one mid, one top. Force this fight right here. Loop, Decker, do something. We want to kill that's great hits on Deckard. Oh, don't turn on Joe. Oh, man. And now Ball is here. Oh, boy. Okay. So, we need to... Yeah. We effectively lost a 3v4 there, because we changed our target focus. Like, Trench is in position now. That's a great wall bang. That's good damage, but we're not going to get a kill because we don't have anybody. This loop is mistime, no follow-up CC. Yeah. That's a good absorb. Um, Luigi's trying to live. Luigi's going to live. Trench is trying to live. Trench is going to live. And then they get the cannons for free. Yeah. So, I didn't see Cocoon used. If we're taking a fight, use Cocoon. Just flat out every time. Every time you want to take a fight and Joe's in the fight, just Cocoon Joe. Like, we didn't use half of our ults here, if that was truly the fight we wanted. That just came down to like us not pushing buttons. Like, I'll back up on this one, because I have a feeling this is going to be similar. And before the game, snowballs.